Well, think about that verse of scripture. It says, "He that endureth to the end." So, y'all hang in there with me. We'll get through this. Uh, I wanted you to think about some things uh, that our country is going through now, and. Um, It's a lot to be concerned about. And first of all, I wanted to tell you, when you go to work a lesson up out of this book, it reminds me of when Dee and I went up toward Coffeyville, Kansas, and we stopped at a Golden Corral there, and there was a lot of truckers there, and I knew it had to be a good place to eat. And... Uh, it was a huge building, and we went in there, and as far as you could see, there was pies and food for a city block, and I thought to myself, well, that's a lot like the Bible. You just, you know, there's so much in there, you just got to settle on something and feed on that, and uh, sometimes it's hard to make a decision because there's so much good stuff there. Um, I reminded this one fellow that he went to church on a Sunday and his wife didn't go. And when he got home, she said, well, what did the preacher preach on? And uh, was it a good service? And he said, yeah, it was a good service. And he said, well, what did he preach on? He said, he preached on sin. He was a man of few words. And said, well, what did he have to say? said, he was again it. <laughs> so sometimes, you know, it just comes right down to the wire what, what we have to, to talk about. Uh, our country has been going through a lot of things lately. And it reminds me a lot of what Israel went through when they got away from God. And I, I see a lot of the similarities there. You know, we've had all kind of troubles. We've had two COVID things come up. We've had fires out in California and the Midwest. We've had dust storms. We've had tornadoes. We've had um, people, you, you, you turn on your TV and there's 15 lawyers on there telling you to sue somebody. And, you know, that's just not what the Lord, I think, is pleased with. You know, he, he says, if a man sue you and take away your coat, give him your cloak also. And, uh, you know, he told us to forgive one another. And uh, sometimes, you know, it ain't easy to be a Christian with all the things that you're hammered with during the week and on TV and on radio and all. We've had crop failures. I, I was listening to TV, and they said because we'd had such a big drought out in the Midwest that the cattle out there, a lot of them didn't have enough to eat, so the beef prices was going up. So, you know, we, they have no grass to eat, and so the food prices goes up. So it looks like that we're not in God's favor right now as far as a nation goes. There's a lot of things that we've kind of set aside, you know. And I remember when the church was, like the fellow said, again it, then the rest of the world respected that. But uh, a lot of that is kind of gone by the wayside. Um, I want you to look at several verses of Scripture. I try to teach what's in this book. If it's not in here, I don't teach it. And I think, you know, this has made, this book here was the reason that the United States was one of the greatest nations that's ever been on the face of the earth. And if you remember... 
and I don't know, I'm a history nut, and a lot of you know that. This nation whipped the British when it was mighty young, when we were mighty young. The biggest nation in the world that had territories all over the globe and at the Battle of New Orleans, if you've ever studied that battle, you can see a picture of God on the side of America. The British forgot to bring their ladders. And at the time of that battle, a huge fog rolled in. And when they broke out of the fog, they was within a hundred yards of the ramparts that the pioneers was on. And buddy, when we got through with that battle, they loaded up everything and went back to England. And you know, things like that just don't happen. A bunch of squirrel hunters beat one of the most powerful nations in the world because they trusted in the Lord. And I, I think it's a shame that we have seemingly gotten away with that, you know, away from God. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people, you know, may think, well, you know, God's different now. Turn with me to Malachi 3, just to the left of Matthew there. Malachi 3. And look at verse 6. Chapter 3, verse 6. He says, For I am the Lord. I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. He said he would be with them all the time, and he kept his promise. Now, he whipped their tail when they got away from him. And he, he, he didn't have any problem with breaking a switch and sending them all over the world and, and you know, discipline people. And he feels the same about our country today. And, you know, I think that it's time Christian people stood for what they believed in. And, you know, we... we we sat on our hands when they took prayer out of schools. And now we're paying the, the difference because we didn't speak up. And now you look at all the things we've had, you know, the COVID and the dust storms and tornadoes and the beef prices and all, this, all these troubles, you know. And I wanted you to, uh, a lot of people may say, well, Malachi's in the, in the Old Testament. Turn with me to Hebrews 13, 8. Hebrews 13, 8. <clears throat> All right. Some of you, I'm sure, have got this in your Bible. What does that say? Somebody read it for me. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Lord said, I am God, I change not. So if it was wrong when Israel did it, it's wrong when we do it. And you know, I hate to think that America is going to have to be taken behind the woodshed, you know, and suffer some things. And, you know, we, when you look back at the history of this country, you see how much we have prospered over the years and whipped the biggest nation that came against us with a bunch of squirrel hunters. And God has blessed this nation tremendously and we just wonder what does the future hold for us 
All right? So he said he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. All right, now turn with me. We're going to read some things about what happens if we do or do not follow the Lord. Turn with me to uh, Deuteronomy 28. We've studied this before, but I think some things we need to be reminded of in a, you know, in a, every few days to kind of stay on track. You know, sometimes we're bad to get off in the briars and get away from what God expects us to do. And he tells, first of all, in, in chapter 28 of Deuteronomy, he tells, this is what will happen if you're godly people. It's amazing the blessings that can be ours if we're only godly people. But, you know, a lot of times we, we take the, the wide road instead of the narrow road. All right? I want to, want to read this to you. All right? It says, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Now look what he says here. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, and the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. Now you think back. Quite a few years ago, I remember, you know, we always raised the garden, and Mama canned everything that she had to can, and then we had stuff that we gave to everybody. But nowadays, if you're lucky to to raise enough for you and a few more meals. You know, they, they will, they'll tell you all these things, and I, I get so aggravated watching TV. They'll tell you that this earth is millions and billions, four billion years old. And I, I, showed in our class some of the uh, the petrified wood that I'd found. It had turned, literally turned to stone. And I said, how is it possible, you know, that this has turned to stone? And so I got the Bible down, and I began to look, and I found out, you know, the Bible said that it covered all the high hills, so many cubics and upward, you know, and, and if you go by what it says, you know, uh, Mount Everest or something that covered that, it was, you know, like 25,000 feet deep here. And I found out that when muddy water is under pressure of 25,000 feet, the pressure, it takes 2.3 cubic feet of pressure to make a pound of pressure, 2.3 2 cubic feet of water to make a pound of pressure on something in the water. So if you have 2.3 cubic feet. So literally, we were somewhere around 12,000 pounds of pressure on any wood that went to the bottom during Noah's flood. Now, here's the crux of the matter. When you put that much pressure on a piece of wood, 
it's possible that it is saturated completely with sand and muddy water in four to five days. And when it dries out, it's like concrete. They'll tell you that it takes millions of years for these things to happen, but this concrete under here took two days. Two days. So, you know, I... Um, In John 14, 16, the Lord said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And the Bible says that Satan is a liar and the father of it. So who are you going to believe? You're going to believe what the Lord said, that the earth is not as old as man claims it to be. I think that's one of Satan's lies. Because when you you read, you know, he said in the first day, in the second day, in the third day, and then I think it's what, on the fourth day that he made man? Or on the sixth day, something like that. Um, but anyway, I wanted to read you the rest of this because it tells what happens to a nation that gets away from God. And it is serious business, all right? <clears throat> All right, he said, uh, let's go to verse 6. He said, Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. How would you like to be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out? Get up of a morning and you hit the door, you know that, that God is going to bless you. What a fantastic problem for a person to have. I'm telling you, to be blessed even when you get out of bed and when you go to sleep. All right, blessed shall you be when you get up and, all right, and when you go out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Now, I don't know if you're a history nut like I am, but I remember what the Germans said in World War II and World War I. They said, we're not as scared of, of the British and we're not as scared of, of anybody else, but said the Americans will figure out a way to kill you. And they were scared to death of the Americans. And many of them, you, you remember uh, Sergeant York? Sergeant York was kind of like a David in the Bible. We had men like that that were not afraid to put God first and, and to be the kind of man that God expects us to be. And that's one of the reasons we're having so many uh, problems now in our country, you know. Um, let's read on. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouse, and in all that thou settest thine hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself as he has sworn unto thee if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. I remember reading about a Frenchman that he wondered why America was so successful in everything that they did. And so he came over here, and he spent some time here in this country. And he, they asked him, they said, well, what did you find out? What did you find out about America? He said, America is blessed because America is good. Now, we've gotten away from that. 
And that's why we have, you know, so much trouble in this country, you know. And if you, if you turn on the news, it's one of the most depressing things you can watch on TV is the news and see how much problems we have in this country. All right? Let's read on. We're just getting in the blessing part now. All right? <clears throat> And all the people of the earth, in verse 10, shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. Did you know that when Congress adopted, you know, the, the Constitution, and back when a lot of the ones, you know, the older ones that were, you know, we read about, they prayed for four solid hours before they did that. And now, if you pray, somebody's going to have something. You can't pray at a football game without somebody raising sand about it. Pray at a football game anyway, according to this book. Who you want to do? It said the Bible says we ought to obey God rather than man, so we pray anyway. If they like it, fine. If they don't, they can suffer in another country. But this country is going to be blessed if we follow God's command. All right. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of the ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. Now, when Eisenhower come back from World War II, we loaned millions of dollars to nearly every country on the face of the earth, and they paid us back a little bit of interest with it, most of them. Some of them didn't pay it back at all. And now we're trillions of dollars in debt. Where did we go wrong? All right. The Lord shall open unto thee the good treasure, the heaven, to give the rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath, if that thou hearken unto the commandment of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day. Have we gone aside from any of the words that he commanded us? Yes, we have. to turn to the right hand or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. All right, now we get into the part that we're experiencing in our country because we turned away from God. Verse 15, But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. Cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land and the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Cursed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and cursed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke in all that thou settest thine hand unto for to do, until thou be destroyed, and until thou perish quickly because of the wickedness of thy doings. 
whereby thou hast forsaken me. Now look at 21, verse 21. We have experienced AIDS in our country. We experienced this COVID-19, and now we've got another COVID virus that's even worse than that. Look what he says here. The Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee until he hath consumed thee from off the land whether thou goest to possess it. There's some serious consequences to forgetting about God. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption and with a fever and with an inflammation and with an extreme burning and with the sword and with blasting and with mildew and they shall pursue thee until thy perish. And thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass. In other words, your prayers won't get through because you forgot God until you humble yourself. And then he said, the man that humbles himself, he'll lift him up. But we've taken prayer out of schools. We've done some things I know that are not pleasing to God. <clears throat> and the Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust from heaven. Shall it come down upon thee until thou be destroyed. Now, how many of you remember the 1920s? We had the roaring 20s. You remember what happened then? We had the dust storms. They showed crops that were just covered, you know, with mounds of dust and houses and, and all these people, you know, didn't, wasn't able to raise anything. And people straightened up a little bit then and God, you know, took his hard hand off of us and started blessing us. You know, they, they talk about the big revivals that we had back then. In verse 25, And the Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies, and thou shalt go out one way against them, and flee seven ways before them, and shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. And thy carcass shall be meat unto the fowls of the air and the beasts of the earth, and no man shall fray them away. The Lord will smite thee with the botch of Egypt and with the emerald and with the scab and the itch whereof thou canst not be healed. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. Now these are not my words. These are God's words. You know, I think I think that we're a godly people and we put God first. That these things might, you know, he said, he told David, he said, 10,000 shall fall at thy side, but it won't come near you. So we got to re remember what he said and be a godly people. And then you said, trust in the Lord and do good and we don't have to worry about these things. You know, but if we don't, brother, there's a judgment day coming. All right, let's read on. There's, there's some more here. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways, and thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build a house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and shalt not gather the grapes thereof. Thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes, and thou shalt not eat thereof. Thine ass shall be violently taken away from before thy face, and shall not be restored to thee. 
Thy sheep shall be given unto thine enemies, and thou shalt have none to rescue them. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. And thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always, so that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see. The Lord shall smite thee in the knees and in the legs with a sore blotch that cannot be healed. And the sole of thy foot, from the sole of thy foot unto the top of thy head, the Lord shall bring thee and thy king which thou shalt set over thee into a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. And there shalt thou serve other gods, wood and stone. Let me ask you a question. What happened to the Jewish people? Did Germ what did what did Hitler do to them? So is this book true? You know, I remember when the Jewish people humbled themselves and they came back into their own land. And uh, nobody would sell them any weapons. And they came through the Golan Heights there. And there was a gap in the mountains. And uh, they had uh, had a f about six howitzers. It was all that they could gather up. And the, these uh, tanks from Syria came down, and they were going to invade uh, there. And so they started through this gap in the mountains at the Golan Heights. Now, this is after they had been persecuted by Hitler and had came, became a godly people and came back into their land, and God began to bless them. They started through the Golan Heights, and they fired one of the howitzers at the first tank, and bam, it creased to a halt. And it blocked that whole passage through the Golan Heights there. And the rest of them, they began to say, run, God is with them. And so the other tanks turned around and went back to Syria. They only had to fire one shot. Now, these things that we've talked about are not tales or stories. They're things that really happened during our lifetime. And we've seen them and we've experienced it. And this book is as true. You know, the Lord told us the devil's a liar and the father of it. He said, but I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And so we... We have to make sure that we keep our minds on what is the way, the truth, and the life. Because the Bible says that we'll give an account for every word spoken, you know. I want to be like that man that said he preached against sin. He was against it. <laughs> you know, this... This world tells us all these things about evolution and everything. And I have some questions. I want just simple things. You know, the Bible says that the simple things confound the wise. So all these people will tell you this is billions and millions and years old. Let me ask you a question. If they're billions and millions of years old, and a bird only lives at the most 10 years. And during that 10 years, that bird has to know 30 days in advance that he needs to start building a nest. 
Then he has to know that it's time as he builds this nest, the rough stuff's on the outside, the sticks that are bigger, then the stuff goes a little finer, and then on the inside, he lines it with, with horse hair, anything he can find, and feathers, and makes it real. Tell me something. How did he figure that out since he only lived five years or ten years at the most? That was put into him in the beginning. He knew it from the very first. All right. Now, he has to sit on this nest for 30 days or at the most, you know, 28 days, somewhere like that. And then these things begin to hatch. Now, I don't know whether you've ever studied this or not. I had a book uh, and, you know, the Bible says that if you're a godly man, said the steps of a godly man are ordered by the Lord. So whatever a godly man finds, it's not because he's real smart. It's because the Lord said, go this way. There it is. And I, I, I was over looking through a dump years ago. And uh, I began to see some, some old books there. And one of them was a poultry book. And this poultry book had some of the most amazing information in it. It said this egg begins inside the chicken and says as it begins, it grows and it gets bigger and bigger. And when it gets to a certain size of a yolk, it, it comes loose from where it's attached. And it begins to move slowly down this tube toward its exit point. And as it moves down this tube, it's covered with a film, first of all. That's the part that when you break the egg, it don't go everywhere. It, it's still a yolk there. And as it comes on down, then, you know, it's amazing the way God has made that thing because at first it's just covered by a thin membrane and then it begins to be covered by a calcified shell. And it's, it's just covered by that shell. And this shell now is an amazing piece of engineering. It will hold up the chicken and will not crush, but the little baby can pick a hole in it and get out. Now, you figure that out. How thick do you make one, huh? If it's too thick, you know, they would never hatch. The little one could, and if it was too thin, she would crush it. And, and we say that all these things, you know, they'll tell you, well, and, you know, and I get so aggravated listening to people, you know, talk about how old all this stuff is. And I said, well, the Lord, according to it, is about maybe somewhere between five and 10,000 years old, you know, the most. And the Bible says the fool has said in his heart there is no God. And, you know, we, we talked about this, these poultry chickens. All birds have that same thing. Not only birds have it, but lizards have it. Snakes, a lot of the snakes that are not born, you know, alive, have it. The fish have it. How did this evolve over millions of years? And because a fish egg, how long does it last? You know, how long, you know, if you're a fish, can you wait a million years until you're able to lay an egg? <laughs> and you know, this happens from everything from an eagle to a little hummingbird. And I watch them hummingbirds, you know, at the house, and it's amazing. I've never seen a bird that could fly backwards when a hummingbird can. But, you know, if we just consider the things that we see every day, we realize that this book is true. You know, I want you to think about this now. 
The Bible says, in the beginning, and this is found in John chapter 1. Let's just turn there. because I want you to not go by what I say, but what this book says. John chapter 1. Now, when you read this, you realize why John, all the disciples were martyred except him. Buddy, let me tell you something. This rascal has been with Jesus, and he learned a lot from the Lord. I look at what he says. In the beginning was the Word. What is this right here? The Word of God. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. What did Jesus say? He said, I and the Father are one. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. God himself came to pay the redemption price. I tell you, we are a fortunate people to worship a God like we have. Verse 3 says, All things were made by Him, not evolved, made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Does the darkness understand John 1? I doubt it. They think it takes billions of years for things to happen. But they cannot explain how the bird happened and the egg because the simple things confine these, you know, confound the wine. <clears throat> All right. I get where I can see, I'll read the rest of it. <clears throat> there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. You think about that. A fella comes over to your house and you don't know who he is, but he was the one who built the place you live in. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Truth. That's where your truth is. It's not in these people that have been to all the schools and have learned all these things about it taking millions and billions of years for things to accomplish. One of these days we're going to meet the author of this book. The Bible says we'll give an account for everything done in the body. 
I would hate to be one who did not believe this book and did not believe what a man who has never told a lie. The Bible says it's impossible for God to lie, but the devil is a liar and the father of it. And so if you don't believe what he said, one of these days we'll give an account. And he said, how come you didn't believe me? I've never lied. What would your answer possibly be? You know, God has blessed each one of us. You know, he said he gave the parable of the talents. And he said that he gave one man ten talents, he gave another five, and he gave another one. Well, you know, <clears throat> to double your money, you know, it's something. If you just got one, it don't take a whole lot, does it? Just double, I can make two dollars, you know. But one fellow said, I made, I made, I got ten, I made ten more. Another said, I've got five, and I made five more. And the strange thing about this is he said that you don't been faithful over a few things, I'll make you ruler over many things. And he gave the same blessing to the five as he did to the ten. So it don't matter how many talents you've got. What matters is what have you done with what God blessed you with? And he will bless you even if you have one talent. There should be some way that you could use that for the Lord. All right, we're just about to come to the end of it here. Huh? Well, let me ask you a question, Anna. Do you know him? <laughs> All right. They didn't know him, and they didn't want to know him. Mm -hmm. Well, they, they could have known about him if they wanted to, but they, they wanted to do things their way. And that's the way it is a lot of times. You know, people want to do things their way. The Bible said we've turned everyone to his own way. And God laid on Jesus the iniquity of us all. You know. Um, I wrote down several things. The Bible says that in Matthew 1926, all with God, all things are possible. In Mark, it says the same thing. In Mark 10, 27, all things are possible. In Luke 1, 3, it says nothing is impossible with God. So you think he had a problem making a world? No. Read Genesis and look how he did it. Man, it's... Uh, it's amazing how he did it. You know, he made the grass before he made the cows. They didn't evolve. But he said, let the earth bring forth grass and herbs, you know. And then the next day he said, okay, we've got the grass. Now we'll make the, herd, the, the cattle, you know, and the deer and all the other things. And it's, it's amazing, you know, how he did things, you know. I want to um, to read one other thing before we close, all right? Uh, there you go. Um, turn with me to Exodus. I think it's 29, Exodus 29. 
I'm going to show you two things, and then we'll close with that. Exodus 21. All right. <clears throat> now, Exodus 29, we're going to look at... at uh, some verses, uh, we're going to start over in uh, 29, verse 21. All right, now I want you to follow with me as we read this. And thou shalt take of the blood that is upon the altar and of the anointing oil and sprinkle it upon Aaron, who was the priest, upon his garments and upon his sons and upon the garments of his sons with him, and he shall be hallowed or made holy. That's what that word means. All right? And his garments and his sons and his sons' garments with him. Now, I want you to turn with me to Revelations Revelations chapter 19. All right, and we're going to start in, let's start in verse 11. All right, you ready? All got it? And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. <clears throat> his eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Look where in verse 13 what it says. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Now, when you read over in Exodus, Aaron and the priest were made holy by sprinkling. Here you have a picture of the Lord clothed in a vesture that's been dipped in blood. What does that tell you about his holiness? Now, brother, if we can be made holy by a sprinkling of blood, how holy is a person that's dipped in the blood? Brother Charlie, dismiss us, buddy. Amen. Let's put this up.